So for this week's story, a story I've chosen for, I think we're going to send it out to grade threes, fours, and fives. I'm sitting here in the wheel, in the wheelhouse, in the greenhouse, because it's a story about planting. And I know we've talked about this before in the last few weeks, but how many of us are planting. We're planting gardens. We're, we're just really enjoying that. And in and sitting in the my our greenhouse here, there's a lot of little seedlings growing. But we've also been able to put our tomatoes in the ground already, so that they're really growing nice and tall. And this is a story about tomato plants. It's called "The Summer My Father Was Ten. It's by Pat Brisson. And one thing that I think is pretty neat about Pat Brisson is that she actually is a librarian, and she wrote this story. Illustrations by Andrea Schein. The story is the perspective of the dad talking to the child saying when I was 10 years old this is what happened and it's the kind of story that maybe it would be great if you were listening to it with your dads your moms and dads but your dads and have a little chat about it afterwards because it really is a story that needs to be talked about the summer my father was 10 by Pat Brisson Every year, my father and I plant a garden. Tomatoes, peppers, onions, marigolds, and zinnias in neat straight rows. We pull the weeds that pop up and we water and mulch and tend it all through the summer. Cutting flowers to make bouquets for the kitchen table or to give Miss Morowski our neighbor, who broke her hip last winter and has to walk with a cane. And every spring, every spring, my father tells me about Mr. Bella Vista and the summer my father was 10. Mr. Bella Vista lived alone in the third floor apartment above my father and my grandmother. Plants grew all winter on his window sill, and in the springtime he trudged with rake, garden fork, and trowel to the vacant lot next door to plant a garden. Some years he had to drag away old tires, broken bottles, and other trash before he could even start. Once his garden was planted, though, you could find him there early morning, weeding, watering, and watching over his plants. And in the evening, he would go and sit on an old wooden folding chair and listen to opera on his radio. My father didn't know much about the old man, only that he always wore flannel shirts buttoned up to his neck winter or summer. He didn't talk much to other people who lived in the building, and when he did talk, his accent made his words sound strange. My father and his friends always made fun of him, and sometimes they called him Old Spaghetti Man. He's from Italy. Then one August afternoon, when my father was ten, he and his friends were playing baseball near Mr. Bella Vista's garden. My father's friend, Nicky, hit a ball over my father's head and it landed in the middle of the garden. My father ran to get it, and he found it under a big, leafy tomato plant. The tomatoes were round and ripe, just the size of the baseball. And my father thought, boy, I'd like to see Nicky's face if I threw a tomato instead of the ball. And he hit it and it splattered all over him. And so that is what he did. And Nicky did hit it and got splattered just like my father thought he would. My father laughed and laughed. And Nicky chased him back into the garden and grabbed a tomato off the vine and threw it at my father. And then my father threw one at Nicky, and then Joe threw one at Kevin. And before long, they were all throwing tomatoes and peppers at each other, batting them against the side of the building, the hollow peppers thumping against the bricks and showering thin white seeds and pulp on the wall and ground, and the tomatoes hitting with a splat and bursting into messy globs. They even pulled up onions and uprooted the flowers, swinging them around and around on the, over their heads and then letting them go. They were shouting and laughing so much that they never heard Mr. Bella Vista coming. But when Nicky stopped laughing suddenly and stood still, eyes wide and staring, my father turned around and saw his neighbor. He was shaking his head and saying something in Italian. He looked at the wall, splattered with tomatoes and peppers, and at my father and his friends, and he said just one word. Why? My father looked at the garden, trampled and ruined, and it was only then he realized what they had done. 
He looked back at Mr. Bella Vista, but the old man had gone to his plants and was tenderly picking up the broken pieces and setting them in a pile at his feet. My father's friends all went away, leaving my father and Mr. Bella Vista alone in the lot. My father wanted to go over and tell his neighbor he was sorry, but his feet were heavy as stones holding him there. He watched for a few more minutes and then dragged himself home. The next morning, the mess was all cleared up. The ground was raked smooth and there was no way to know that a garden had been there. But my father knew. My father's friends seemed to forget about all, all about what they had done. My father could not forget. Every time he saw Mr. Bella Vista, he remembered. He wanted to tell him he was sorry. He just could not make the words come out. Fall and winter came. My father went to school, played with his friends, and almost forgot about what happened. But when April came again, he remembered. He watched for his signs of his neighbor getting his garden ready, but nothing happened. May came. The sun was warmer. The days were brighter. Still, Mr. Bella Vista never made one move to plant. Finally, when my, one day when my father was going up the stairs on his way home from school, he met his neighbor coming down. Mr. Bella Vista, my father began, are you going to plant a garden this year? Mr. Bella Vista's eyes looked straight into my father's. So you can destroy again, he asked. N no, my father stammered. I, I wouldn't do that. I mean, I've been so sorry about last year and I thought maybe I could help. Mr. Bella Vista didn't say anything at first. He studied my father for a few minutes, then rubbed his jaw with the back of his hand. Tomorrow, he said at last, tomorrow we will make a garden. The next day was Saturday. My father and the old man worked all day together. When they were finished, they had a patch of ground, carefully raked and planted with tomato and pepper plants, teeny tiny onions and seeds for marigolds and zinnias. Now, when my father looked at the garden, he didn't get that hard knot in his stomach. Summer came, and every morning my father and Mr. Bella Vista checked their plants. My father carried water from his apartment during dry spells and learned to tell what a weed was and what wasn't. When the flowers bloomed, the old man gave my father bouquets to give my grandmother, and when the tomatoes were red and ripe and a little bigger than baseballs, the peppers and onions ready, my father helped Mr. Bella Vista make spaghetti sauce, and then they all ate dinner together in Mr. Bella Vista's apartment and listened to opera on his radio. Every year after that, my father helped his neighbor in the garden until the year, until the spring my father was 16 and Mr. Bella Vista got sick and went to live in a nursing home. Then my father planted the garden himself and when the flowers bloomed, my father carried bouquets on the bus to his old friend. And when the tomatoes and peppers and onions were ready, he made spaghetti sauce and put some in the freezer and told Be Mr. Bella Vista that they would have a spaghetti dinner when he came home. But Mr. Bella Vista never did come home. But now every year, my father and I plant a garden. Tomatoes, peppers, onions, marigolds, and zinnias in neat straight rows. And every year, I hear the story of the summer my father was ten. And I hope maybe if you're listening to this story with your parents, maybe they can tell you about something they did when they were when they were your age. And maybe it's something that they felt badly about or had to make right afterwards. And maybe you have a story like that too right now. So that is The Summer My Father Was Ten. <laughs>